This is the Vauxhall Insignia Grand Sport and it's about as predictable as mince pies at Christmas. But just like mince pies, it's actually really, really good value for money. You get a lot actually. So it starts from just under £20,000. You can save an average of around two and a half grand on one through CarWow. So if you want to see how much money you can save on this or any new car, click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen or on the link below the video to go to CarWow. This Insignia Grand Sport is reasonably smart on the outside. And it's the same on the inside. It's not going to blow you away, but it's neat and tidy enough. I quite like the look of the dash, the way it's all swoopy and stuff. Also, I like the way they've got stitching in the top of the dash in this soft touch material. In fact, most of the materials are pretty squidgy in quality. Just a few plastics as you get lower down, start to get cheap and maybe here as well on the door trim, but it, it's all okay. Also, the actual build quality feels sturdy. And look at you here, we have some carbon effect trim. Mmm, bit unnecessary, but I guess it does brighten things up a little bit. In terms of the infotainment system, this is the SRI nav, it's a mid-spec car, and then you get a slightly upgraded 8-inch screen. And the screen itself is reasonably bright. The menus are easy to flick through. I say easy, when you're actually sat in with your seat belt on, it can feel just a little bit too far away, like that, so you do have to lean forward. You get Android Auto and Apple CarPlay as standard on it, which is good. Like I said, this is the nav, so it gets the navigation as well, so you can use the proprietary system, and it's, it's all right. Look at that, no lag really in the screen, it's nice and fast. I think it's quite a good system. So for my full in-depth review of the infotainment system, click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner screen on the link below the video. I'll give you a more in-depth view on what it's like to use. And also let you have another look around this car's cabin. So another thing you might notice is this. Once again, the climate control buttons are a bit far away and they're small, so they're a bit tricky to hit. At least you don't have to go through some menus on the screen like you do in some other cars. And the buttons do feel quite expensive as well. Moving on to the instruments. Well, I like the fact that you've got this big digital screen in the middle. You've got some extra dials as well. One that shows the battery power, one that shows the oil temperature. And it seems like overkill on a car that is used for commuting. You get that kind of stuff normally on sports cars and they just do it for effect, like you've got extra dials. So I don't know why they have it here. Still, you can go through lots of different menus on this screen. You just use the buttons on the steering wheel and you can look at different settings and, and move through different views as well. Speaking of the steering wheel, adjustment in it is all right. And there's so much adjustment in the driver's seat. I mean, look how far I can take it back. Loads. There's plenty of headroom as well, so you'll be able to get comfy even if you're very big and you can jack up the seat pretty high if you're short. I also like that you have a seat base extension. I love the vanity mirror as well because you've got the lights either side, like you're in some kind of dressing room at the theatre. Well, I'm not so keen on those, this, look, the rear view mirror, I mean, that is just horrid. It's so cheap and it's like something out of a 90s car. In terms of storage, well, the door bins are big. I've got one bottle in there, got another bottle in there. And yes, you've guessed it, there's a third big bottle in there. You also have some storage under here. So there's a place where you can keep your key. There's also a cup holder there. And the cup holder isn't too deep that you can't have a coffee cup in there. You know, like the top doesn't pop off. You've got an extra storage area under here for some stuff. I wouldn't put a drink in there because if you did, it would be in the way of the gear shifter. There's some more storage, yet again, under here, and then you have USB input as well for the stereo. So, yeah, reasonably practical. I want to point this out. This car has aluminium pedals, which feel sporty. Mind you, like I said, it's the SRI version, which is supposed to be sporty. Maybe that's the reason for this carbon fibre trim. Now, actually, equipment levels right across the range is pretty good. Though I would step up to this SRI nav because you've got everything you actually need at a really, really good price. So I plug the details of this car into the CarWow configurator. So it's a two litre diesel, 170 horsepower manual, SRI nav, and I got an offer back for just under 23,000 pounds. So that's a saving of almost two and a half grand. When you think about it, 23,000 pounds for this car with all the kit on it is really good value for money. Now click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen or the link below the video to check out the CarWow configurator. You can build this or any car and just play around with it, see what kind of offers you can get back. It's well worth doing. Let's check out the back seats. So, yeah, insignias are often used for taxis and there's a reason. They, they are quite roomy in the back. Most notably in terms of rear leg room, I mean, look how much knee room I've got. There's loads and you can slide your feet under the seat in front. What's not so good is the headroom. So 
depending on how you sit, it's all right. So if I sit like that, it's fine. Now I'm 179 centimeters tall. I'm average size. I'm okay-ish, but if I want to lean back a bit, because the roof slopes really sharply at the very back, you end up hitting the back of your head on it. It all depends how you sit. I like to sit like that, so it would bother me, but I've got a friend who's over six foot and they sit more like that and they're fine. So you will need to check it out. When it comes to carrying three at once, it's all right. There is a bit of a hump in the floor, but the footwells are so big, it doesn't matter so much. Now the center seat isn't too raised that you can get away with sitting in the middle as an adult. Kids, more than fine, absolutely fine. The window ledge isn't too high, so they can get an okay view out. And the window does go all the way down, which I like. I also like this, the Isofix covers are flipped down so you won't lose them. And then the actual fitting is really easy to get to. In fact, there's plenty of space back here to fit a child seat. Show you this as well. Look, you've got an armrest here, but I don't like the fact you've got cup holders in it because you end up getting your arm in them, so it's not that comfy to rest on. Also, these pouches in the back of the front seat, if I get my only pad, you'll see that I can just about fit it in there. You wouldn't fit an iPad Pro in there. When it comes to charging it, you can charge it from these USB ports, but look how cheap that, that seems. It looks like it's just been stuck on, probably because it has just been stuck on. Another thing to note is you've got a little coat hook there, though I don't like them there because you end up having your coat if someone's in the back just kind of blocking their view out the window. So that's not so good. So it's easy to get out of this car. Oh, I forgot to show you, rear door bins. Come back, there we go. <laughs> Gonna tick everything off the list, haven't I? Moving on to the boot. I like how you open it. So you just press on the Vauxhall badge. You have to excuse how dirty it is over the rear end. It's because we just drove it here through a puddle. So the boot, it's a nice size, look at it, and it's easy access because you've got this hatchback. There is a bit of a lip to lift stuff over, but it's not too bad. You've got some tethering points here, place to hang a bag off here, a little storage area here, which actually isn't that great. Now, underneath the false floor, you have a spare wheel if you pay some extra for it. I think it's about 110 quid. Otherwise, there's a bit of extra space under there. I'm just going to remove the parcel shelf because it is a bit awkward to do right, the way it's attached. And it is huge. So when you remove it, you just have to like lay it in the car or just leave it at home, I guess. I want to show you this as well. I'm just going to lean in because if you need to, so if we can do this without falling over, there we go. Look, you can fold down the centre section like that. <laughs> I almost fell over. You can fold down the centre section to like carry long items if you've been furniture shopping or you're carrying skis and two people either side. This is neat. Look, electrically operated rear fold down seats. Now you don't even get those in some premium cars and it's standard here. You know, this car is such good value for money. Then you've got a reasonably flat floor. There is a bit of a ridge in it, but <sighs> If you push hard enough, you can slide things to the front. Now, if you want to see more detail on this car's practicality, such as how much stuff you can actually fit in the boot, what it's like with three adults in the back and how easy it is to fit a child seat, then click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen or on the link below the video for my detailed practicality video. Now then, it's time for the car wow, five annoying things about this car. You can't actually adjust the height of the seat belt, which is quite annoying on a car that you're going to be doing lots of miles in, especially if it's at the wrong height for you, because then you could end up driving along. It's like throttling you. The glove box is really annoying. For instance, look, it springs back up when you try to open it quickly because it wants to open under its own speed. Also, look at this. You have the fuse box in there, which means that the actual glove box is really small. There's only enough space for the manual and this thing here, which looks a little bit like a she wee Though I do actually think it's for adding the AdBlue to the tank, it's a, it's a funnel. Though incidentally, AdBlue does contain urea. The image from the reversing camera is just so bad. In fact, I think it's the worst I've seen on any car. It's supposed to be in color, but it's so washed out that it almost looks like it's black and white. Vauxhall has kindly fitted this car with a specific mobile phone holder. The only problem is it's as tight as a gnat's chuff. And so, yeah, if you've got a case on your phone, you have to take that off so that it can fit. And then when you try and fit it, it's still so tight that if you've got a screen protector on, look, you end up cracking it like I have. Damn it. The diesel engine on this car is just so loud and rattly. 
In fact, you can hear it from quite a distance, as I'll illustrate now, so I'm going to walk away from the car. You can still hear it. Go a bit further. Yeah, definitely still hear it. I'll try a bit further. Yeah, still quite clearly there. I mean, this could go on forever, pretty much, but you get the idea. Don't worry, there's still plenty to like about this car. Here's the car wow five core cool features. The special AGR active front seats have been designed with the help of a bunch of back doctors from Switzerland, Germany and Austria. And they're supposed to be really good for your spine. The driver's seat, it has a massage function. It also has side bolters which grip you tightly and obviously memory functions as well. Yeah, the best thing about it though know, is they come as standard on all but the entry level model. You can get the Insignia with four-wheel drive, and the system is actually the same as that used in the Ford Focus RS, though in the Insignia, it doesn't have a drift mode. The Insignia Grand Sport is up to 175 kilos lighter than the old Insignia. That's the weight of two lardy passengers. This car is the first Vauxhall to feature an active bonnet. Now, if it detects a collision with a pedestrian, it'll pop up slightly to help cushion the blow somewhat. Unlike in many other cars, the controls for the optional heads-up display are actual physical buttons right next to the steering wheel rather than being some controls hidden in some sub-menu of the infotainment system. So it's dead easy to move it up or down and to cycle through the different views. Plus, while it is an option, it's only £300 extra, which isn't bad. So now we've looked round the car, let's see what it's like to drive. This Insignia Grand Sport generally is a pretty nice car to drive, much better than you'd imagine it to be actually. So, things that I like about it. Well, in town, I appreciate the light steering. It's very easy to work and to maneuver and park this car. The gear shift is quite long, but it's, once again, nice and smooth and easy to use. The thing that I'm not so keen on though is the visibility. So, I've had to jack my seat up so that I can see out and gauge where the front corners of the car are because the dash is quite deep and the windscreen slightly raked that you can't see out that well. Also at the back, the rear window is pretty small for a hatchback and big pillars there at the back and quite a large blind spot there which can catch you out when you're at zebra crossing and some people are trying to cross, you might just lose them in that for a moment and could get into a tricky situation. Thank God for that pop-up bonnet to help protect pedestrians, eh? Now, I do like the way this thing goes over bumps. In town, it's pretty good. This car's got the adjustable suspension, so I've got it in tour mode, which is in the most relaxed setting. It's just nice and smooth. It's an 850 pound option, and it's one that you might want to consider if you do a lot of driving over speed humps and stuff like that. Now, if you're mainly driving in town, just get the 1.5 litre turbo petrol version of this car. That's all you're gonna need. However, it's most likely you're gonna buy this car to go up and down the motorway, in which case you want one of the diesels. I've got the two litre with 170 horsepower in this car, and it's got enough punch to overtake people with ease, and it's quite good for towing as well. So this is the one I would go for. In terms of economy, well, it's supposed to do around 53 miles per gallon, but I'm just getting 32, which, Ain't that good, really. I had this same engine in the estate version of this car about a year or so ago. It runs about 42 MPG, so I'm not sure what's happening. Now, yeah, this car is pretty decent for long journeys. My only complaint, really, is that when you're going around 70 miles an hour, you do start to notice quite a lot of road noise from the tyres. However, there's hardly any wind noise, so it's, it's not all that bad. Now, you might be wondering, yeah, okay, so it's going to be good at going in a straight line, but what is it like when you go round a corner, well, I'm gonna put this one's adaptive suspension into the sports mode, so it's a bit firmer now, and I noticed the bumps definitely more than when it was in the comfort mode, but by being in sports mode, it should mean that it doesn't lean quite so much in the bend, so let's have a go. Yes, it actually grips pretty well, <laughs> and goes round corners better than you'd imagine a Vauxhall to. Now, I'm not gonna describe this car as being fun to drive as such, you know, in the same way that some other sports saloons are, like a BMW 3 Series. It's not a sports car, even though it might be called the Grand Sport, but it's more than adequate when you encounter some corners. And really, we can't say fairer than that. Look. Are you surprised, Brad? I'm not surprised, yeah. <laughs> Cameraman surprised. If you click on the pop-out bar in the top right-hand corner of the screen or on the link below the video, you can check out the best deals 
on the Insignia Grand Sport at Carway. Right, so what's my verdict on the car? Should you hmm, avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the Insignia Grand Sport. You know, it's not the most exciting thing in the world, but it's good to drive, it's practical, and it's incredible value for money. I'm going to enjoy a mince pie now. Cheers. Hmm. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, comment on it, and share it. Also, click on our logo to subscribe to this channel. And if you click on the bottom right-hand corner, you can actually watch more of our content. Meanwhile, click over to the right to go to our deals page to see how much money you can save on a new car at CarWow. Now, did you spot the Easter egg in this video? It was the picture of the Insignia aftershave from the 1980s on my phone in the car's boot.